Texas. Let's see if we can find out here today. It's pretty cool been coming to this spot here for a few months now and it's been cool just seeing over time the change in both birds and people. There's actually some birds right up here right now. Yellow warbler up here. Go down here a little further, see if we can find something else. There's definitely a world famous spot in April. Once May arrives, so many people just disappear. It's a little bit weird. Mm. I'm gonna go around a different way. Can I still find these folks up here? This boardwalk here is incredible. It's just an amazing way to see birds at that level. Canopy Boardwalk here is just incredible. Um, amazing spot to be able to get up at eye level with so many, so many things. Wish there was birding infrastructure like this elsewhere. But being able to get this eye level view of these heron colonies, great tailed grackle calling, that really loud, loud noise, some movement over there crocodile going after a great egret on its nest. It's really calm right now actually. It's been uh, it's been really windy here for a while. But uh, there's a this band of thunderstorms approaching right now and it looks like it's just beautifully calmed down. Pretty nice time to be out. The real worry right now is the bugs here that have been pretty apocalyptic but pretty fun. You can hear that whoa, whoa, whoa. it's impossible to imitate, but uh, the sound of snowy egrets is pretty funny. Let's go over here and get a look at the colony. See what we can find. Actually turned into a beautiful day here. Definitely see how it's been. a couple weeks ago this whole boardwalk was absolutely packed insane numbers of folks yeah, so they did this whole boardwalk here is amazing you get like 30 30 things oh hey drew how's it going um yeah it's it's pretty pretty good today actually I arrived and just right along the entrance road there was a uh, western kingbird like right there to start and then there's loads of peewees and um, Acadians and other stuff. And only five cars in the parking lot. Living the dream. Let's see what we got over in the rookery. How far north did you make it, Drew? Where you at? Does it look like this up there? Not too bad. Well, I don't know if the water is supposed to be this color in a normal world. It's actually pretty cool. You can see the turtles down here as well. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah. down here that big round thing is a uh, 
soft shell turtle, which is this kind of crazy big old turtle. Yeah, this ain't the Smoky Mountains. There's nothing remotely montane about here. Actually not getting destroyed by bugs yet either, which is a pleasant surprise. Let's see what we got down here. The winds are just starting to change to the north. It's a wood peewee up there. Let's see what happens. Let's zoom in here. See the wood peewee in the middle there, preening. World's best view. You can go for salamanders in the Smokies. Like the highest diversity in the world, right? And down and get a closer look. The rookery. Nope. Cardinal or a summer tanager? Just a cardinal. Plants? Plants are unfortunately not salamanders. Is there like a goldenrod there or something that Justine wants to look at? It sounds terrible if so. There's birds in here. This is good. Go to the rookery first. Let's see what we got. That's fun. Everything has just started to hatch in the last few days here. So there's snowy egrets um, that I think should be hatching any moment. Rosette spoonbill babies are getting to be all over the place. Um, tons of nests. Great egret chicks are everywhere. Um, a lot of the cormorants look like they might be ready to move around and be actual real birds soon. It's been pretty fun. Not a bad place just to come hang out. Oop. Got a close friend. It's pretty cool the egrets here come up and they uh, they look for sticks. Comes like this super hot commodity, and they'll actually just fight each other for sticks. Let's see what this guy's doing. We got a stick hunter here. Oh, it's probably gonna break a stick off and fly back to uh, to the nest. So this video is taken with phone just to give an idea of how close these birds are here. It's pretty amazing. I love the long plumes coming off the back. Beautiful orangish this time of year. It's really funny seeing these birds kind of compete for sticks and spend so much time going for it, especially the spoonbills that uh, are just kind of clacking away at trees with their weird spoon faces. Doesn't seem like something anything in nature should actually do. That's so cool. It's hard to snap something without hands. It's not the ideal toolkit. Actually really bendy willow branches. Oh. I just want to go help, you know? Oh, if it's all just seen, now everything makes sense. There we go. Flying back with a stick. Landing. Helping build the nest. 
Not too bad. Not a bad life. This is kind of the full view back here. There's a, so there's a whole crew um, that's been working here for the last few months that's been uh, counting, counting the roost here, or the, um, the rookery here, both birds that are breeding here and roosting here, and um, you can hear it is just deafening non-stop calls from largely great egret chicks. Um, every now and then there'll be something else screaming. I'm not even sure what's screaming right now. Maybe a snowy egret. Um, but there's, in total, and well over a thousand birds breeding in the colony here and uh, pretty fun thing comes another egret this guy's hungry for sticks Oh, it's nice. That one. It's so interesting to me seeing uh, seeing a bird that I'm very used to having in water or at the edge of a pond or something, flying around in trees, snapping off branches. A whole different ball game. Oh, cool. trip. I feel like stay here much longer just the whole tree is going to be gone. Also some things, so if you look up here, this group of egrets flying high is a group of cattle egrets and so they don't really breed here in, in big numbers and they're probably uh, migrants that are moving along the coast here in the gulf just m passing by the colony moving through quickly. Spoon bills are so ridiculous. Let's look at the next viewpoint. Oh, there's a cormorant. Let's take a look back here. A few over overlooks of the rookery. Let's see what we can find. Thanks. Uh, thanks. By the way, the folks stopping by. A few people watching. I'm not not sure who you are, but. You're getting a little bit of, bit of Texas birding fun in. It's been really cool. Been, uh, been in this area for about three months now, and uh, just kind of visiting and watching the seasons seasons change has been really really cool. Um, and now heading out later this week. Kind of kind of bummed. It's been pretty uh, been pretty special. Snowy egret flying across the water there. Look at a little quiet down here. Not as much going on. This uh, this place is pretty magical in the the springtime here, and really curious to know what it's like in the summer. I mean, I think it's probably just buggy and crazy. But certainly something to watch. Here's some young egrets. You can see some. There's the two spoonbills here, right in the middle. And just above them, there's uh, a couple fuzzy boys, uh, kind of teenage great egrets hanging out in the in the nest there. They're the ones with the cacophonous. Ring, 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 ring. It's just hopefully something you can hear. It's a cool noise. I'm gonna go look for some songbirds now. Rookery's cool, maybe come back in a bit, but curious to know what's been here. Um, the songbirding here is really dependent on the winds, and the winds have been really bad for a while, and that they've been uh, southern. So kind of the, the best wind for the birds in full migration. And so then all the, all the birds here kind of overfly the Texas coast. Um, 
just shooting up to uh, kind of East Texas and places further north where there's a lot more food and a lot more going on. And when the winds are good, you don't really get anything here on the coast. Um, but when you go uh, out on a day with north winds, so the wrong kind of winds, uh, that gives these birds a headwind, kind of knocks them down. Oh, yellow-billed cuckoo just flew across. That's a good sign. That's quite a good sign. There haven't been any cuckoos around, really. Okay, this could be a fun day. Um, but it's been about five or six days of winds that are good for birds and bad for birding. Um, but the winds there are changing. Um, one thing that's also important to notice is, let's see if this works, the number of in mosquitoes here is, this is actually kind of light for what it's been here recently. Um, it's not great, but you know, you gotta make some sacrifices. So the, the equation recently has been, is the birding good enough to sacrifice pints of blood? Oh, here, there's a cuckoo right here. There we go, silhouetted against the sky. Catcher. Just back on the broad camera. It's going to be, I don't have things set up for binocular views of birds. So today it's just going to be a walk along. See so we can find, see what's interesting. But if birds keep being as tame as that, that cuckoo was, there might be a chance for more stuff. Okay, we got a warbler in here, magnolia. This is good, again, there haven't really been any of these birds around. A few weeks ago, there was this multi-day weather pattern um, where these big storms came through and it was strong north winds. Oh, American Red Start up here. Um, and really knocked down a ton of birds. There was this, this kind of four or five day period right about was 16 to 20 April or so. Um, and there was just incredible birding for that time period where I think it was minimum of 22 species of warbler in a day here. Um, and just hundreds and hundreds of birds. And kind of got spoiled a little bit from that. Um, so since then it hasn't been as good, but it's been pretty be interesting just seeing what's possible but there were also hundreds of people then I have to admit I really like the ability to not have much else folks Ooh, just heard something move in the underbrush over here that could maybe be a armadillo could be a fun visitor singing. Hoping some stuff will make noise because should be able to pick that up with the mic here. Probably just picking up mosquitoes now. There's a purple gallinule. I'm not sure if it's visible. Down there in that low branch. Not the world's greatest quality ever. But it's purple gallinule. They've actually been all over the place. They've even been uh, in fields here, like in actual, just like a yard basically, a lawn. Um, they don't really seem to care what they do. Oh, there's a northern water thrush calling down here. Cardinal calling as well, the loud tick. It was about 
five miles of trails here, which makes for a lot of time you can sink in here. Um, it's pretty fun. Oh yeah, there's lots of birds up here. There's a bay-breasted warbler, um, female bay-breasted. What else we got? There's a black and white. Another bay-breasted warbler. The numbers of bay-breasted warblers here have been pretty darn good. Um, it was a week ago, Friday now, had this really big push. Uh, Eastern wood peewee is flying overhead, silhouetted against the sky flying there. Um, there are over a hundred bay breasteds here last Friday, um, which was pretty fun. I'm kind of in this spot here. Oh yeah, there's a lot of movement up there. Tennessee warbler, another eastern wood peewee. Oh yeah, it's happening. Another red start, magnolia. These are all just naked eye right now. I can just leave this here practically and you can just see stuff flying around. Another magnolia. Black and white singing. Another Tennessee. Common yellow throat. I should just shout these out and have someone do the eBird checklist for me. Drew, you want to do that? That'd be great. Another bay breasted at eye level. Got in here. Oh, something's just saying it could have been a golden winged. There's a lot of stuff in here. Magnolia. Okay, that sounded that definitely sounded like a golden winged. There's a red start right in here. More magnolias. There's a few mosquitoes. Now wants to think that it's just all fun and games birding here. Mosquitoes have arrived. Okay. Another northern water thrush calling. A yellow warbler up high. A black throated green warbler. more stuff was singing and calling, it'd be easier to point out what's making noise. Nice black throated green right at eye level. What I may do is take a walk back on one of these trails here. I might get a good look at alligator. And then, uh, then from that see where to go if there's enough stuff close. I need. I don't know if anybody in here right now has uh, has chat enabled, but if you do, how uh, how much does it feel like it's lacking not having a view through binoculars of birds? Is it just like totally bad, or is it still somewhat interesting? Ooh, more bay breasts here. A lot of bay breasts. There are five right here. Frogs solution. It's getting birdie in here. Red start. 
one of the things I'm really hoping for is a black throated blue warbler today actually it's uh it's a species that is remarkably unusual here in East Texas. I've only seen one all spring. Um, they normally go farther east coming up from Caribbean wintering grounds, but there have been some some east winds. There was one on the island last week. Their magnolia. Um, that would be a great one to find. One of the things that would be definitely fun to find today and totally possible is uh, flushing a Chuckwell's widow. Um, done that a bunch this this spring here, and it's uh, it's even more possible with the the fewer people here. We're often there alongside um, alongside the uh, the path, and if you're lucky, one might pop up. So maybe you'll get the flush. Oh, Death by Chickadee. Thanks for the thanks for the note. That's good to good to hear. I'm trying to figure out the the binocular thing, but it's hard figuring out how to get that to go back and forth. Yeah, I'm counting on you to keep an eye out in front of me through the camera in case I flush a chuck and don't notice it. Chuck is Chuckle's Widow, by the way. I don't know if I said that fully. Oh, another eastern wood peewee. a bird that definitely came in just today. It uh, was actually working earlier today, um, just back at home inside on the computer on a Zoom meeting because that's life. And uh, I had my window open a little bit. There's a little tiny tree right outside the window. And I, I looked out in the meeting and there was a Philadelphia Vireo in the tree. And I was stoked. It was awesome. It was great. It's a yard bird where we're staying down here. Life was good. And I, I go back to the meeting, and then, like three or five minutes later, I see this this flurry of motion out the window, and I look out, and the resident mockingbird had uh, had chased the vireo, um, and it chased it into the window of my room. So I'm on a meeting, like trying to pay attention and be productive, and a Philadelphia vireo flies into my room and lands about two feet away from me on the windowsill. Um, so I scooped it up and put it back out the window and didn't expect to touch a Philadelphia Vireo today. Katie and Flycatcher are calling. Our first call. There's definitely a lot of them in. But anyway, haven't even seen a Philadelphia Vireo here yet today, but I uh, actually touched one earlier. That was cool. Miss banding birds. It's been a while. Oh, it is loaded in here. Let's go over and take this trail, snake trail, past the gator zone. Some movement in here. Hmm, not sure what that was. Yeah, so later in the season here, there's a lot of birds that not a lot of people see in, in Texas or anywhere near here at this this time of year, just given the fact that everyone bales at the end of April. So looking out, hoping for species like morning warbler um, or more numbers of bay-breasted warblers, black pole warblers, uh, some of these late season things. That, oh, yellow bill cuckoo. Another one just flew. get that one on cam. This is where I almost stepped on an alligator the other week. Um, trying not to do that too much. It seems detrimental to enjoyment of birding. Magnolia warbler in here. Some other stuff too. Red start. 300,000 mosquitoes. The full, the full range. Oh, that's cool. Eastern Wood Peewee call. Complete voice breaks. You couldn't even hear what I was saying. The 
a beautiful little area of cypresses right here. For those of you who were here earlier as well, um, this is the underside of that same amazing canopy walkway. Um, walk by over there. So I'm going to take a loop over, then I think I'll go back over, pop in on the rookery, um, try and show an anhinga nest that's been hanging out there as well, along with everything else. And try not to step on any gators. It's been super hot here today. It's been like 85 and 85% humidity, um, which isn't necessarily the greatest combo in the world, um, which makes it fun to dress up for the bugs. It's like the only thing you dress up for these days. Nice little pond here. Eastern kingbirds flying around. Ooh, northern water thrush calling back in here. Let's see if we can see it. It's a nice little swampy southern patch in here. I love these here, these little uh, these little lumps in the ground there. Let's see if we can zoom in. Yeah, these are uh, cypress knees. So uh, bald cypress, the, uh, the species of cypress here, um, just has these, I believe they're, they're kind of root humps that then can form new, uh, new individuals of the tree. So that's a bald cypress there in back and in front here. And then they form these, these really cool cypress knees that then just kind of propagate along the edge of the wetland. Create this really cool, really cool little marsh. Feels very southern. Magnolia warbler is in here. Not sure if one will be close enough. This could be a day where birds actually end up being low and close enough. Might get to see some some warblers with an iPhone camera. Tennessee warbler flushing down the path. Ooh, Acadian flycatcher. Here's the best gator chance. I didn't hear there was a male gator displaying the other week. It was super intimidating, actually. This massive, massive creature, like bellowing, like shook the earth, sounded like thunder. Pretty cool. Yellow warbler. It's interesting here, yellow warbler is a uh, very late season migrant, um, which not quite used to that. Um, coming from the Northeast, thinking of them kind of arriving at early May, like, like a lot of other birds, but down here along the Gulf Coast, they actually arrive weeks after many other birds that are coming from, from South America. Central and South America. Hooded warbler is actually one of the first birds that arrives down here on the Gulf Coast. Um, that will late March, early April. A bit different from experience further north. Purple gallinule. That chicken thing calling. Flying around in the tree there. The purple gallinule. Let's see if we can get closer. Oh, there's another one. Oh wow, they were in this tree eating fruit, I think. That's right in here. This purple gallon is like super weird water chicken. It was evidently just up here in this mulberry tree eating these mulberries, which is something I've never seen before. Really cool. And the mulberries are actually quite good. I feel like a gallon. There's a marsh rabbit as well. Giant, deadly. Tame.
some more non-bird life. There's a water snake in here. Um, so I'm not sure which. I believe there's two or three species of water snake here. Um, and cotton mouse. But if somebody knows what this is, please, please tell me. But I've just been calling it water snake spa. All, uh, all spring. I've been in this spot regularly. Egrets and herons flying by. There's a, out on this little island, there's actually um, tricolored herons nesting, um, which is the first time in, uh, in the history of this specific little island here that uh, they've ever had tricolored herons nesting. So it's, a, it's conservation land, and one of their focuses is to create habitat. So pretty exciting, I think, for, um, for the groups here. This is one of several reserves in the the High Island um, Houston area that's owned and managed by Houston Audubon, um, which is really awesome because just having a bird focused conservation group thinking about it makes it so much better. You can hear those really sad whistles, maybe. Of course, they stop now. There we go. Is it eastern wood peewees? Um, and they're, they seem to be a bird that just never stops making noise. Um, it'll be middle of the day in the summer and they're still, they're still shouting about it. You know, and pretty much everything else is, is quieted down. So it's interesting here. There aren't a lot of birds that, uh, that call and sing here in the, the Highland region. Um, they're usually pretty silent, but wood peewees are the difference. Oh, this is cool. You can see those birds flying around up at the top of the tree against the sky there. So they're uh, eastern kingbirds. Um, so eastern kingbirds are kind of one of the most visible migrants. They're also calling that really high-pitched noise. There's one as well. Um, so these kingbirds are kind of the, the classic migrant here in that they're just constantly, um, constantly kind of overhead, and they're often the first bird that arrives when there's a good migration day. So the, the kind of migration phenomenon here is birds are flying over the Gulf of Mexico, um, and then bad weather, north winds, like we were talking about earlier, knock them down. And then they come and they land in the nearest nearest refuge. And often, you can see there's more of them flying around up there. Purple Martin going right as well. Um, and Eastern Kingbirds are often the very first bird that kind of um, falls out or drops out of the sky in these events. And um, I think one of the, the thoughts about that is that they are uh, one of the faster flyers. And so they're just kind of crossing the gulf first. Uh, and so are falling out of the sky first because they're the first ones to get here. Um, but what that means when you see kingbirds like that, that means you're in for a good day. Let's go on down. Oh, here's this cute little spotted sandpiper. Two of them. And these posts here. So, there they go. They're adorable. I really like spotted sandpipers. Uh, anyone in chat? Have you been seeing any any birds recently? Any signs of spring? It's May. Life is good. Oh, here's a ribbon snake. Might be too late for it. There we go. Oh, it's going up. See that? Lost it in the brush. Two species of snake so far. Oh God, that's Maylee. Hi, Maylee. And Luke. Oh boy. Welcome back to High Island, Luke. Maylee, you gotta come sometime. It's actually a really good day. Maybe the least bitter will fly by. Least bitter almost hit me on this platform the other day, which was actually pretty fun. Um, I was just standing here looking out over the pond and you kind of have this little this little balcony here 
and uh, there's also a least bitter and habitat there. And it decided it wanted to go from one to the other, and it flew like within arm's reach, and I actually jumped and almost fell over. But it happens to happens to the best of us. What have you two been seeing in Massachusetts? Have birds finally arrived to the frozen north? Egret's gone by. I don't see in the bittern though. Oh, there's a purple galano. Because Texas. You can see it's heavily camouflaged in that it's bright purple and standing on an open branch. This is when you wish you had a camera. Goodbye, buddy. Good luck. I do love this spot. One of my my big things this spring has been to get as many birds as possible at this this place walking around here, um, and so trying to like find birds that don't belong in the woods. And so way out over here, over the highway, and out to the the west, in the marshes, um, there's all sorts of shorebirds and waterbirds and stuff. So I basically just come here and sit at a really good forest place and look for birds two miles away out over marshes because. I don't know. I, I can't explain it. But anyway, I've now seen more birds here than anybody else, so that's fun. Let's see what else we can find back here. Ooh, raptors and vultures. There's been uh, been flocks of Mississippi kites moving through, and a few swallowtails as well. Those are mostly through now. I still need magnificent frigate bird for here this spring as well. There's some birds down here low. Oven bird walking around. Doubt it'll be visible. Let's go back over towards the rookery. I'd seen up oh, another yellow billed cuckoo. They're at eye level. It's five already. I realized today that I make strange whooshing noises whenever cuckoos fly. Maybe it's just whenever birds fly, but definitely cuckoos. I think. Go back the same way. Less bugs. Go back a new way. More bugs. More bugs? More bugs. This is great too. Like normally when I just walk around birding alone, instead of talking to myself, people people think it's a little bit weird, but now I'm like talking to myself, but not talking to just myself. So life's great. And peewees. Female cardinal. It's interesting here, there's a lot of cardinals like in the woods and in thrush habitat that makes it really challenging to tell the thrushes. This is a really good spot earlier in spring for Swainson's warbler. It's nice, dense, low stuff. And it uh, feels like there should be Canada warbler in here now, too. I'm not sure. Maybe this will be where the morning is. Dare to dream. Magnolia warbler is calling.
this place is really special here with the whole kind of highland and um, the sanctuary as well. Um, given the elevation here, the incredible elevation of 25 feet, it makes it um, the highest point within two miles uh, of the entire Gulf Coast in the U.S. Um, so there's nothing else that's higher than 25 feet within two miles of the entire Gulf Coast. And so when there's these like historic um, storms and stuff that uh, just wreak terrible, terrible disasters along the coast here, um, they've kind of spared a oh, black-footed green warbler calling. Um, they've spared high island because of its height and so it actually turns into an island once every 50 or 100 years when there's a massive storm. Uh, what that means is the trees here are well over 100 years old in some cases and um, provide incredible habitat as compared to everything else that gets washed away every every few years by a hurricane. There's a lot of birds up here right now. Let's see if any of them will be visible. The red start. Magnolia warbler, black footed green, ooh, black burnian. That's a great animal. Wood peewee's calling. A lot of wood peewee's up in here. That's my, my wonderful imitation number nine. Here, what at Virio? Magnolia singing, maybe. Red start up here. Bernie Lillard singing. One of the things that was really fun here earlier in the season was a uh, in that big kind of mid-April fallout event. Um, there were tons and tons of uh, Kentucky warblers. It was amazing. Just a bird I've never seen kind of more than one or two or three of at a time. Sitting right here at eye level. And it's gone. Um, anyway, there were so many Kentucky warblers, uh, had multiple days with 25 to 30 Kentuckys, and just having that bird be that common was really, really special. Here's a mosquito update, by the way, um, for anyone who's curious. Not all that fly are birds, sadly. I feel as though mosquitoes almost don't bother me anymore, sometimes, but then the other times it feels like it's pure death, so who knows. I also got stung by a bee the other day, so now I have mosquito bites on a bee sting. So that was pretty fun. Oh, another wood peewee. Anyone in chat have any birds you've seen arriving back by you yet? Any spring migrants? fun and exciting. There's got to be something. Go back over here. Take a spin through the parking area um, where it looks like there's two gigantic deadly marsh rabbits but there's also been uh, fruiting mulberries up here. Um, the same tree that that purple gallinule was in. Um, and they've been holding lots of tanagers and orioles. Hi, bunny. Um, and it's been pretty amazing. Oh, brown thrasher just flew right in front of us. Perch just to the right of the sign. Keep your distance. Keep your distance, thrasher. He's watching. Thrashing.
this is like I swear if you don't have a camera the birds are all the tamest that you've ever ever encountered Spunkies are full of BT greens. Oh, that's cool. Do they sound different there? I thought Southern Appalachian um, black throated greens are supposed to sound different. Black and white in the yard in Somerville. Nice. And so spring happens. Oh, this is cool. See all those birds flying there? There's at least two or three of them. That's more of those Eastern kingbirds coming through the vanguard. The vanguard of fallout bodes well. Yeah, there's a lot of birds up here in these trees. Indigo bunting, indigo bunting. Ah, oh, Mount Auburn. That brings back the memories. Haven't been there in a long time. That was always such a fun spot. A lot of formative birding memories there. One of the weirdest ones, I remember going there in spring once and looking up at a tree full of warblers and there was a dick sissel in the middle of the tree and in May um, just feeding on buds alongside warblers. It's pretty bizarre. Uh, Chickadee, do you ever go to, um, what is it, Brooks Estate in Medford? Or... Um, the, the Fells, Middlesex Fells, are always two of my favorite spots. Oop. Hummingbird just flew in. Oop, Baltimore Orioles just flew across in front. Keep an eye out for the Bullocks. Oh, high flock of something. Waxwings, that was really interesting. A flock of like 60 or 70 wax wings. Let's see if I can get them up there. They're really far out. Not sure it's going to show up. There we go. You can hopefully see them flying behind. Way up, going out from the white into the blue. Big flock of wax wings. It's the only. Uh, only big flock of waxwings I've seen here all spring, actually. Yeah, Daniel Webster is great as well. Um, yeah, Brooks Estate. That's uh, that was the first place I ever saw American woodcock display. Back getting into birds and always remember that. That was fun. Um, Daniel Webster's awesome though. Purple Martins that are really nice. So many places to go. Check out the Inhinga nest. Maybe we'll get some close spoonbill babies. Let's see what we can find. Try and survive one last pass through the bugs. You good? Howdy. Howdy. I've also realized about myself that in uh, in the past few months here, I have somehow at some point picked up the maybe unfortunate habit of saying howdy. I don't say y'all yet, but I say howdy like unconsciously. Um, and it feels like it's the start of a terrible spiral down into something that who knows where it'll end. Probably y'all, but we may never know. I've been advised to maybe mix it up with New England and say wicked howdy, but I don't think that would, that would go over that well. Maximum confusion. Quiet over here. Another Acadian flycatcher calling up here. Squeak. Oh, Black belly whistling ducks calling. They're here all the time. Fly catchers. Okay. I 
love this this trail here is just so cool um, kind of having the, the living tunnel to walk down that leads to birds that's the way the world should be Some movement up here oh, just a squirrel it's fun here because yeah sometimes you run into armadillos um, run into those those rabbits pretty close um, there's apparently feral hogs in here as well, which I don't really want to run into. Um, so, hope, hope to not see that. Apparently also cows sometimes wander in, so you'll come around the, the corner and run into a cow. Which, that might be not, not too bad. It's a nice cow. This, uh, this dike trail along here has been, been really good this spring too. There was one day, kind of actually right where we are now, just looking around in front of us on this trail, there were five prothonotary warblers hopping around on the trail, um, which is five more prothonotary warblers than I normally see hopping around on the trail. So I was not complaining. And this is also where uh, tanagers were, were hopping around on the, the railings here of this, this little walkway. And as I'm sure you can hear, we're getting close to the colony again. There's a gator. Little guy. Hey, buddy. I'm not doing too much. Get a little bit closer. Super cool just having alligators around here. And some really big ones too. Okay, so here is kind of the other end of the rookery. Um, similar things, but there's actually a little bit of difference here. So again, the rookery is largely great egrets, uh, neotropic cormorants, snowy egrets, roseate spoonbills. Um, so in these trees in front here, it's very largely um, great egrets. A few neotrops, a couple snowies, a couple spoonbills, but the very bottom of the left hand tree here, let's see if I can get in a little bit, um, might be able to see even with the phone camera, there's a little bit of orangish on some of those little guys at the bottom, and that is uh, those are cattle egrets. Um, and it's actually kind of cool because apparently last year um, they didn't record nesting cattle egret here uh, the, whole, the whole spring, the whole year. Um, but this year it seems that there's at least two or three nests that have been set up. Um, so not sure uh, what the difference is, but it's been cool to have another, another species of, of breeding egret here. Um, so having that has been a pretty, pretty cool little thing. And let's see, so we got, yeah, a lot of fuzzy baby great egrets. Um, and then, oh no, did the anhingas? Anhingas might have abandon their nest. I'm just going to get back on wide here while I try to find it. Okay, now it's still in there. It's just a little bit more distant. Oh, go tailed grackle screaming. Um, so you're going to have to believe me on this one. It's a little bit farther back than recalled. Um, this tree with the spoonbill standing in it, kind of in the front middle, just to the left of that, there's a fork, pale fork. And right in that, there's one anhinga nesting. It's the only uh, the only anhinga nesting in the whole the whole place here uh, that that anyone's aware of. So it's been kind of a fun fun thing to be able to come see most days. And uh, interestingly enough, too, the um, so the cormorants here, like I mentioned before, are pretty much all the rare cormorant here is a double crested cormorant, which is kind of a funny um, a funny difference from anywhere else I've been at least. Um, and just having kind of that be this, uh, this flipping of reality where usually looking through all the double crests for maybe a neotropic. Um, but here, there's one, yeah, one double crest out there today. I've had maximum of four at a time, whereas normally there's four to six hundred neotropics. So, kind of fun. I think I'm probably going to go up here and just, uh, 
just check out over. Hey, Chicky, thanks for thanks for coming by. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna come up here and just look out over the rookery, and then probably sign off as well. Go put on some more bug dope. Just walk around. The bugs definitely uh, maximize what they can do to you when you're holding something in your hand. Man, it's nice not having anybody else here. I wish every birding place had infrastructure like this, though. This canopy walkway is just amazing. I mean, we've had Cerulean and Cape May and Blackburnian all below eye level, just um, just hanging out there. It's pretty awesome. Great. Well, here we are, High Island, Texas. Uh, thanks so much for for swinging by and sharing in it a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna try to do do some more of these. Any uh, any critical feedback on what was good or what was bad, what sucked, what was fun, um, would be great. Because I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to share birding remotely, especially in the world we we live in these days. And a lot of people out there going to cool places, and just a little bit of effort can uh, can bring others along for the ride. So see what we can do in the future but thanks uh have a good rest of the day happy may may the fourth be with you